Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue of Southeast Asia TV. Tonight we have the pleasure to have uh, a theme that will affect pretty much uh, uh, all the life, you know, uh, the livelihood of Cambodian in many walk of life, the government, uh, in so many different ways. Uh, we'll be talking about you know, an organization that every one of us uh, know. Uh, whose life is, is uh, impacted on and is about the UN. And we have the pleasure tonight to have, uh, to welcome uh, Douglas Broderick, uh, the UN resident coordinator. Uh, Douglas. Thank you, welcome. Your Excellency. Appreciate it. And it's really good to be on your show today. Uh, Sapana will do. The, uh, okay, the, uh, okay, <laughs> Sapana. <laughs> yes. I, uh, but really great to be here and uh, representing the UN. I, I think you're aware I've been in the UN uh, 20 years and. Uh, you still I, look young. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I try to be. And um, I've been posted in many places around the world, in Thailand, uh, Egypt, Jerusalem, West Bank, Gaza, Thailand, Baltimore, Baghdad, Eritrea, Yugoslavia, Armenia, DPRK, China, Bangladesh, and now Cambodia. Wow. And I started my career... Um, uh, in, on the Thai-Cambodian border in 1983. So I've been with the Khmer people for almost three decades now trying to help and uh, assist them as best as possible. And I arrived in Cambodia to head the UN in yes. 2008. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, and we, we have a mission of where there's uh, about 26 agencies, resident yes. and non-resident. Yes. And our assistance reaches out to 80 to 120 million dollars a year. And I think you're aware it affects many spheres of yes. life yes. Uh, in Cambodia, and especially outside Cambodia. But in Cambodia, we're involved in most sectors, yeah. helping the yeah. government, helping the people move ahead, progress, uh, especially on the education, the health side, the humanitarian wow. side. Yeah. It, <laughs> I keep missing you then because... Uh, you were in the border in 83, and I was a refugee camp. I was yeah. in a refugee camp in 1979, 1980. Mm. So I missed you by three years. Yeah. And you were like, a few decades later, I missed you again because I left uh, the Cambodia in 2005. You came 2008. Right. So we, we off about three years. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, I myself also have the pleasure to work on and off with the UN, and, uh, and that's why I'm so, so happy to have you on the show today to talk about the achievement but as well the challenge uh, Douglas yeah. uh, of the UN generally I mean you is, is a tough you know uh, challenging world now but how does it also have a ripple effect on, uh, on Cambodia for example as a country perhaps uh, on the global challenge for us? Uh, I, I, I could bring off uh, some of the things in terms of the Millennium Development Goals. Yes. I think you're well aware that there were eight indicators that yes. the UN has worked across the board mm -hmm. on the eight indicators. And we're working very hard in Cambodia, especially to alleviate po yeah. poverty. Yeah. Uh, Cambodia has done a, a very good job in terms of reducing poverty rate, and we want to continue to reduce the amount of poor people in the country. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's... Uh, How well are you doing that one? Uh, it's, it's, it's going pretty well. Uh, obviously, the financial crisis yes. has put us back a, 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 a little bit. Yes. But I, overall, Cambodia has done a really good job in, yes. in, in going from a rate of 50% to a rate now of 26, 28 30 percent wow. reduction in poverty, which is one of the uh, fastest poverty reduction rates in the world. And uh, we're happy to see that the economy has been robust in the last 10 or 15 mm. years to help that out. And yeah. Cambodia is in a good economic yes. neighborhood yes. Uh, that they're able to benefit regionally. Push and pull. Push and pull with yes. the other partners, yes. which has been tremendous. Yeah. One thing that uh, I mentioned is education. Mm. We're still working very hard. Yes. Uh, especially agencies like uh, UNICEF and UNESCO. Yes, indeed. indeed. And they're working very hard on education, especially getting women, mm. girls to stay in school. In school. Uh, at the end of the day, the biggest development challenge and payoff that mm. a government can do yes. is keeping girls in school. in school. Having girls complete their primary school, their sixth grade, have them hopefully go into the, let's say, the middle school. Yes, yes and complete at least a ninth grade education. 
and that has tremendous economic benefit going down the road that all of us uh, should realize girls get married later mm. later they have mm. a livelihood they yeah. are able to read and write they have better health statistics for that kind of education yeah, yeah. so education is an investment that pays off it's something that all of us around the world have to work more on mm. especially keeping girls in school so MDG wise uh, generally well, how how are we faring uh, general generally it's 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 good we need to continue to keep up what we're doing on the pressure on the poverty indicators especially we need to work hard on the health indicators yeah, yeah. in terms of health we need to work and we've had very good help mm. from uh, her, Her Excellency the First Lady uh, yes. of Cambodia uh -huh. has uh, graciously volunteered to assist uh, the UN in terms of the acceleration campaign yes. uh, for HIV and, and maternal health, which has been tremendous mm. on, on putting a spotlight, yes, putting yes. a focus on that, putting resources into that. I understand that. she was in New York uh, Yes, she, uh, she was in New York at a, a conference on that. and uh, There was a, a specific HIV conference. Yes. And um, we need to continue. Cambodia has done, has won an award for the work on the HIV work mm. in terms of alleviating and, and, and reducing the HIV rate yeah. in, in Cambodia. Uh, I think that that needs to be mm. continued yes. to be done. But that progress is mm. greater in Cambodia mm. than other yeah, yeah. places, especially in Africa. Yeah, yeah. You know, we remain challenged in the world with 35 million to 45 million people with HIV. And yes. it's a tremendous challenge that the UN has, especially mm. in Africa. Yeah. Uh, and getting those resources and retroviral treatment mm. to millions well, and millions well. of people. What, what other thing in that, that you find, you know, exciting working in Cambodia and that you, you see the UN as as a grouping, you know, not just UNEP, but FAO, UNICEF, thing. They, they, they share me a few of, of, of this. Uh, there, there, there's, a, there's a lot happening. Uh, we're, we're very, very happy to see peacekeepers. Mm -hmm. And here, Cambodia was a country receiving peacekeepers. Yes, yes. And having peacekeepers in 92, 93. Mm. And now Cambodia is a country that's giving peacekeepers and, and making peace and sending peacekeepers to Chad, to Central African Republic, yes. to Sudan, mm. to Lebanon. And, and, mm. and, and that's just tremendous. And uh, we we've, have worked hard with Cambodia on that. We'll continue to yeah. do. And we, we're impressed that you know, Cambodia's move from, let's say, receiving those mm -hmm, peacekeepers mm -hmm. to giving the peacekeepers, which has been tremendous. The other thing that's, uh, that we, remains an opportunity for, for Cambodia and something that all of us yeah. have to work on yeah, together yeah, yeah. is the 700 youth a day. Mm. There's 700 Employment. a youth a day entering the job market that need livelihoods directly yes, yes. or indirectly, yes. job creation. Yes. So um, that link a lot to the economic uh, and, uh, and growth of the country. And that links a lot to the economic growth of the country. And uh, we've done lots of, we're just releasing with the ministry a, a uh, youth situation analysis. Mm. Yes, yes. But it's something that will be very key in our work in keeping the youth in mm. mind making sure that we can create opportunities yes, for yes. youth employment, Indeed. making sure that youth can participate in mm. the political, cultural, and social process yes. as vibrant citizens of Cambodia mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the future, and making sure that they help with the economic growth to continue yes. going down the road. So that 700 mm. youth a day, a day form the future of Cambodia which is something that all of us, including the UN, want to concentrate yes, on yes. And, and, and work on. Mm. Uh, another thing is the we're working on expanding the economy yes. and working with government ministries uh, to diversify mm, the yeah, economy yeah, of yeah. Cambodia and move and up the manufacturing, the light manufacturing yeah. ladder. Yeah, and UNP has been uh, quite forceful in this case to work with the Supreme National Economic Council for for the economic uh, Cambodia Economic Forum every year. No? Correct. We, we we have a very good cooperation with the uh, 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 SNAC, yeah. and uh, they have been a very very valued partner. We 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 are constantly in touch with them. 
We've worked very hard on a competitiveness yeah. study that mm -hmm. came out about yes. two years yes. ago, which identified bottlenecks, challenges, yes. opportunities, yes. and problems for the Cambodian uh, economy. And that's something that we continue to work on mm. very importantly. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, Douglas, I think for Cambodia, for example, next year we'll be chairing the ASEAN, right? It's a big opportunity for us. But to me, you know, next year is, is one event that we chair. It's great. But I'm looking four years down the road, yeah. uh, the ASEAN economic community, you know, the free flow of goods and services of migrant workers, that sort of thing. You touch on education. It's extremely important. Our youth have to be educated, have to be skilled, right? right? If we are to at least, you know, enter into a competition, you know, but our economy as well, you know, uh, the rule of the game, you know, the transparency issue, the, uh, you know, the, the comfort to the foreign direct investment, for right. example. So you're working on, on the competitiveness of the economy, which is good. I, ho I hope the UN will continue to sustain that, that track. We, we want to, it, it is a priority, and, and, and we've also worked on other areas in the economy. For instance, we've had sectors working on oil and gas. Yes, yes, and, yes. And we've which is coming on stream soon, no? Which is hopefully yes. coming on stream. We all look forward to that yes. in, in terms of helping Cambodia become an en energy stalwart of the world. Yes. Uh, we're also uh, working very hard on mining. We're, mm. we've been, we signed an agreement in The January. mining, you mean? Oh, mining. mining, mining, the mining. Oh, oh, okay, right. I mean, I'm thinking of the mining. Okay, <laughs> mining, yeah, uh, mineral resources. Yes. Mineral resources. Okay. And yes. I, 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 we want to help Cambodia and the people of Cambodia extract yes. the over $2 billion potential hmm. and opportunity of minerals from the ground uh, for the benefit of the people and yes. for job creation. Indeed. So that's something for that the 700 been, youth for a the day. 700 youth a day, and that's yes. something that we've been working very, 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 very hard on, yes, and yes. want to continue. So you see good potential in the mining sector in in the medium term. Yeah, in, in the medium term, obviously the the mining sector is a long, long plan. It's a long haul. Yeah. you know, you're talking about any beginning into a production mine of five to ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if Cambodia would have one or two very good developed mines yeah, yeah. for minerals, mm. uh, that could create uh, thousands of jobs mm. and mm. that could create a very good revenue yes. opportunity for the royalties, for the taxes, yes. and for yes. the government. And also, it would indirectly, it, it would create uh, thousands of jobs. Mm. Mm. So it is something to diversify yes, the economy, yes. and all of us need to look yes, at. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, since you mentioned mining, I, for I didn't sleep, I think <laughs> the mining, you know, uh, that uh, in, in the context of ASEAN, you know, uh, we, next year, as, as, as chair, we are looking to push initiative yeah. where it, Cambodia could create some sort of center, excellent on something, and a regional mining center in Cambodia is looking good. Huh? Uh, it, it, it's very good. We have very close relationships with uh, His Excellency Proxa Khan. Yes. Um, we're, we're, we, we've worked in mine actions. It's one of the key things that we do, yeah, and we've yeah. done it for a long time. And it's also an area of interest where the donors are. Um, mm. Right now, we're looking to, 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 to clear more mine land, to get some kind of idea of what kind of benefit or economic benefit that happens. I think we're all uh, well aware of the mm. legacy sure. that Cambodia is the third or fourth most mined uh, country in the world. In, 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 in More the West. mining than, G than per capita, no? Than per capita, and you know that was in the western part, and then you do have, yeah. unfortunately, in the eastern part, the, the cluster bombs from, from the, uh, the, the, during the, the Vietnam bomblets War. during the Vietnam, Vietnam War. War. So there is a lot of challenges on that. Mining is a long-term, very labor-intensive mm. operation. Mm. So mm. I, I think based upon the history yes. in other countries, like for instance in Angola or uh, Pakistan-Afghanistan yeah. border, you know, mine action will be a mm. long-term thing that will be with us for uh, a while in terms of helping development, in terms of clearing yeah, yeah. Yeah. and clearing for results mm. and getting those village people, getting those farmers, getting those people back to the land, making the land productive mm. and mm. free for them to do those kind of activities. Yeah. 
in, in the area of uh, Cambodia, you know, engaging actively with the UN, I, yeah. I, I can see, you know, peacekeeping, Cambodia going abroad to uh, contribute back, putting back into yeah. what we've been receiving. And I really appreciate uh, you making that statement because, you know, as a country, I think psychologically it's important that we, as a recipient, when we become able, we, as a, as a moral duty, we, we should give back to the society. Here is a community of nation. Mm -hmm. uh, other thing that you see Cambodia could play a positive role? Uh, I, I, I could say, for example, rather, you know, uh, on, on a physical uh, thing, you see, you send a blueberry, right? Uh, you know, a UN blueberry. But there's also the soft dimension also. Yeah. Experience sharing. How do, how do you share experience to other post-conflict country? Uh, reconciliation, national reconciliation. Right. This sort of thing is hard to quantify, but these are experiences that we could share. Mm. I, I, I would think there would be a lot of things. Uh, Cambodia could help out in terms of moving ahead with the regional process. You did mention the yes. regional process, Ajahn. And Cambodia has the chairmanship in 2012. Yes. And, uh, uh, we know that that's a very good opportunity yeah. and, and things moving ahead regionally in terms of the Asian Trade Center, yes. the trade ties, mm. uh, helping with less restrictions among Asians, yes, yes. the Asian visa process, the Asian customs mm. process. I think those would be some sort of things that Cambodia the, the, could the, continue. The UN is a dialogue partner uh, the, with The UN with the is a dial dialogue partner with, with ASEAN. Yeah. Um, there are, the other thing is that we can continue to work together hand in hand with the peacekeepers yeah. and, and working out on that. Uh, the other thing is you mentioned mine action. There are technical mm. experts in Cambodia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and even though the peacekeepers have shared that, uh, it, it may be an idea to get more of those technical exper experts and to share that with other countries yes yes and to move some of that expertise yeah. Yeah. Uh, abroad the other thing would be that there could be Cambodia hopefully will reach a potential as uh, an agricultural producer yes uh, of tremendous rice uh, amounts and there could be some potential in the future yeah. Uh, obviously, I, I'm stating this, you know, in the beginning you know, of this kind of process, but uh, maybe going down the road, we could see potentially Cambodia as a donor. Yeah. Um, and, and basically, maybe a donation to uh, food aid. Yes, exactly. Going down the road, because, you know, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but, uh, but in the future, it's, but, it's but, something we can look at together in dialogue. Yeah, that, uh, that goes, I mean... In 2015, the goal, as state in the rice export policy, we aim to get at uh, one million ton. You, so you of of mill rice, right? Not paddy. Correct. But imagine the economic ripple effect down to the farmer level, right? right. And the poverty reduction. But but you're right. I mean, if if we are a export surplus, nothing prevents us, you know, to reach out to once again give back something to the UN. Food aid is, is yeah. a typical example in uh, disaster-prone areas, something yeah. like this, you know. Or even sharing our experience on how do, do, yeah. do you turn from a, a net importer of rice, of uh, corn, of cassava into a net exporter. Right. So that's something I, I, I'm quite excited about it, you know. Especially, especially which would be very useful, you know, it's, it's something what we call, the word is South-South cooperation, yes. but it would be that technical expertise working on that and having that go and share yeah. with other, uh, you know, obviously it would start in Asia and could expand in greater Asia, yes, but yes. it would be something that uh, uh, would be very, very good to look at. And I think it would be an opportunity, as, as you were asking yeah. me, on, on where Cambodia would be suggested avenues to work hand in hand with the UN on, on global affairs. Yes, uh, speaking of global affairs, I uh, it come to my mind that you know currently the government is in the process to uh, lobby, to position, to stake its claim 
uh, for the 2013 and 14 uh, right. a seat in the UN uh, Non Permanent Security Council, and and I think to me it's been almost five decades already. Cambodia's member of UN, right? Correct. Uh, we we've been through the ups and down of the Cold War, of the peace reconstruction, but the fact that now the government feel comfortable enough that it want to enter into uh, the arena. I mean, win or lose, you know, that's something else. Mm -hmm. But the fact is a confidence that we want to be an active global citizen and being part of that uh, seat, even for a two-year basis, mm -hmm. will, you know, sort of like assert, you know, a confidence, but also give a strong feedback to uh, the country that we are a country who would want to adhere, you know, to comply with the international norm and in, in international best practice, a global citizen. So what do you think of that? Uh, I think it's something that all of us need to celebrate on. And yes. um, it's something that uh, we need to help out and assist Cambodia as much as possible on, on helping with that in terms of the membership 2013, uh, 2014 in the Security Council. and. Uh, I think it's a wonderful step forward, yes. and uh, all of us should congratulate the yes. government of Cambodia on that. Douglas, we're coming to the end of the show, but I, mm -hmm. I want to wrap up by saying that uh, had it not been for the peace you know, process in two decades earlier, with the strong support of the UN family, you know, in the peace process, in the reconstruction, in the rehabilitation, in the development. Now you're moving beyond development, moving to a much more sort of like aggressive pace of, uh, of growth. The UN family has been away uh, with, with Cambodia. And uh, perhaps I should say on behalf of uh, the Cambodian, you know, thank you to you. Thank you to the UN family. I appreciate that very much. And uh, the UN remains committed to Cambodia. We, we want to work very hard to move Cambodia and together hand in hand to a middle income country and we hope that we can do that in, in the next decade. Um, the other thing is that we want to help Cambodia with the Millennium Development Goals, especially poverty, education and health and environment. Yes and move Cambodia climate change. and climate change being yes. an important issue and help Cambodia achieve those goals yes. or move more aggressively towards, towards those goals in the future. Uh, so <clears throat> we have had a celebration of, of good events and good achievements with Cambodia and we'll continue to remain yes. committed yes. Uh, to Cambodia with our programs and projects. And, uh, uh, and I think that you know that the Secretary General yes. was here uh, yes. attaching great importance to uh, Cambodia last October yes, and yes, had indeed. very good discussions yeah. with, with the government on that and did make the commitment of the UN to uh, uh, work hand in hand and, and have, have projects and programs moving Cambodia up the economic ladder and, yes. and giving them a hand uh, and congratulations for the progress they made and the progress that we'll make together. Well, Douglas, uh, once again, thank you. And thanks you personally for coming to the show, but uh, for Cambodia, thanks for the partnership with the UN, a long-term partnership. Thank you, Savan. Thank you for your, 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 the opportunity to be, be here today and to express you know, the challenges, the achievements, the opportunities, and, and the problems that we're working on together. And, um, I think you're well aware the, the world is, is, is changing uh, and in a way there's many other parts of the world where there's pessimism. You know, we look at Wall Street and see the crisis happening mm. there. We look at riots in London. Mm. Yeah. We look at conflict in Somali or in famine in Somali, but, uh, you know, we look at Cambodia and, and we see an optimistic story, a bright future ahead, uh, which is something that makes all of us happy, especially uh, with our Cambodian friends. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are coming to the end of our show, and uh, I hope, you know, uh, you, you learned something uh, uh, about what the UN has been doing in Cambodia for God knows how many years. I mean, decades already. 
and we're going to look forward for more of this partnership in the future. So I'll see you once again next week. Good night.